하나님 아버지 Holy God our Father We pray that just as you have permitted us this day of the Lord, we seek to meet with you. We thank you for the chance to receive your word. We pray that just as you have appointed your servant to preach your word, we pray that you would fill him with your power. We pray that all the saints will receive your prepared word and will obey it. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Amen. Driven out by the Holy Spirit. Let us read the sermon outline. God revealed His Son to the world for the sake of His glory. He revealed His will, word, and love to the Son. The presence of words and deeds of God's Son, revealed and spoke about the will of God, and showed God's love. Though He was the Son of God, He did not act as He pleased, but revealed Himself by the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit perfects the relationship between the Father and the Son. God wants to, be, God wants to perfect His relationship with the Son absolutely by the Holy Spirit. While Jesus Christ was on the earth, He was actively watched by the Holy Spirit and led by the Holy Spirit. This is the righteousness of the Trinity. God's righteousness is not partial to one side, but is at the center. The Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son dwell with righteousness. This is called impartial justice. Therefore, opposing the Holy Spirit is opposing the Son, and opposing the Son is opposing the Father. No matter what happened in Jesus' public life, the Holy Spirit worked strongly. He could not heal and do miracles without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was with him when he was tempted by the devil. He is the model of our faith life. Faith is by God's righteousness, the Word and the Holy Spirit. Since we buried the flesh together with all desires by baptism, we obey by being driven out by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Many people think that their lives are made by their own decisions. And they believe this because their lives are their own. But specifically for Christians, this is not right. The life of Christians is, is one of a public life. So God prepares us and plans the calling that we must take up. And we must receive and live this calling according to God's plan. So after we believed in Jesus, we must not have, we must not live our lives as the way that we did before. Although we lived as we liked in the past, we must live according to the life that God has planned for us. And even though our lives are difficult and challenging, we must not follow our desires however we please and continue like this, but we must live the lives prepared by God. If we continue to give in to our fleshly desires, we and we this is the same as rejecting the life and plan prepared by God. We must know that our purpose of our lives, we must know that the purpose of our lives 
must be as God prepared and planned. For we know that we have we have been freed from the reign of the devil and we live a new life. So we live this new life and this new life should continue until God until God guides us into heaven and God takes responsibility for this. So it is God's responsibility to guide us into heaven and this is the calling we have received. So when we look at it this way, we can say that we live, we ourselves live public lives. So what is this public life? It is doing the duties given and planned by God throughout our lives. So God has poured out the Holy Spirit for this reason. By giving us the Holy Spirit, by giving us the Holy Spirit, God guides us directly. And the lives that we live are now public lives. So in front of the lives prepared to us, prepared for us by God, so God has given us these plans and we should live them. So as we live our lives, we must fulfill the plans that God has given us. And yet because and yet because we are in the flesh we have challenges and this life is like a desert. And it is very difficult for people to live their lives by their own strength. And because our bodies are in a dangerous place and we are vulnerable to danger at every time. So if God does not dwell with us, none of us can continue. None of us can continue our public lives with ease. And yet, because temptation is so close to us, our lives are difficult. So we must completely rely on the power of the Holy Spirit for if God does not help us, for if God does not help us, it is difficult for us to live our lives. And this is because we are so closely exposed to the devil and, and there are many weaknesses in our flesh and the devil tries to entice and tempt us and he tries to destroy us. And so the Holy Spirit has entered us so that we can struggle against the devil's enticements. So we must rely on the Holy Spirit and go as he guides us and we must be familiar with his guidance and we must take great courage. So more than anything else, we must not live our lives as we did in the past and as the people of the world, but we must follow the word of God and the will of God and we must obey his guidance and we must make the efforts to do this. So efforts is, effort is very important. So the Holy Spirit helps those who make the effort and he gives strength to their faith when they make efforts. So the Holy Spirit does not give strength to just anyone, but we must first have the heart to obey. We must have the heart to obey and we must put it into practice. Until we start, the Holy Spirit will not help us. So God sees the determination in our hearts and to those who desire to do good, God gives them the desire to do this. And as a result, and in, and in the process, He gives the strength to do this work. 
And such people will continue step by step to build up the lives in accordance with God's plan. And as they do this, they will have joy and they will have strength to do this. And this, what we are speaking of, is each of us living our public lives in accordance with God's encouragement. And finally, we will finish with great glory. And this is our public life. So in the Christian life, we might say, that if we do not overcome the devil's temptations, so our life is to continually overcome the devil's temptations. Because there is much temptation in this life. If the Holy Spirit does not dwell in a person, then God has not recognized and sealed him, and they are under the reign of the devil, and it is easy for them to perish. On the other hand, those who are sealed with the Holy Spirit have the authority of the Son. And because the authority of the Son protects them, they, the evil one will not harm them as he pleases. Because unbelievers openly follow the ways of the enemy, they will go to their destruction. So we must be careful of this. For the moment we fall into temptation, we must quickly come out of it. If we do not, if we do not, we remain under the devil's control. And although it might seem that we are not changed, there is nothing different on the outside. And yet we are under the devil's power and we live by his influence. And before realizing we are following, we are following his desire and even those who are in the church will confuse the devil's thoughts as their own and they want to believe that their own ideas are right even though they are actually the devil's thoughts. So anybody, anybody, anybody can think like this, that their own ideas are right when they do not realize that it belongs to the devil's thoughts. So they get easily confused and they end up harming the church and they help the devil's plan to actually harm the church. And they are only saints in name and are actually living unfortunate lives. But Jesus gave his life over for us and this life has been given over for us and we we now enjoy the life of Jesus we live by his life and we we possess this life and God has preserved this safely for us and this has been entrusted by the Holy Spirit so in the past we may have lived live by our own ideas and perished. However, the Son has purchased, has given us His rich life so that we will not live like in the past. So we must not live as in the past, and yet if we give if we give way to the devil's temptation, then we will, we will, uh, we will treat with little value the grace and love of God. We will belittle the value of the love we have been given. Yet we must, we must treat preciously the grace and love of God we have received. So even if our situations are difficult, so, so at any time when people experience difficulties, their hearts, their hearts will easily fall into temptation. So even though we have difficult situations in our lives, even 
even though we live difficulties in our lives, we must follow the guidance of the life God gives to us. So, the Son of God has given His life over to us, and this has been entrusted by the Holy Spirit to us. So, if we do not entrust our lives to the Holy Spirit, and we live however we like, then we will be exposed to the devil's temptation. So it is the question, it is the question as to whether we will survive in this life. So there are three types of people. Number one, those who have not received the Holy Spirit and the devil sets such people like his food because they are not protected they are not protected at all from the devil they are like food for the devil there are the second type is those who have received the holy spirit they have received the holy spirit has come upon them and yet they do not obey the holy spirit and although Although they have first received the Holy Spirit, it is difficult for them because they refuse to obey. They refuse to obey and go back to go back to God. And such people, it is difficult for such people to to restore their public lives, and they will perish. And even though they may be prosperous and rich on the outside they are actually failing spiritually so although on the outside they will be very joyful yet this is actually a very dark joy so the enticement and temptation of the devil comes because of people's desires and they give way to the devil's temptation because of their desires and they then they sin and sin is the opportunity for the devil to kill them and to lead them to death the devil wants to kill them and destroy their spiritual lives and now number three Number three are those who have the Holy Spirit to come on them and yet they live obedient lives. So we can all live like this 100%. So how do we know that we are filled with the Holy Spirit? How do we know that we are filled with the Holy Spirit? It is when we can tell this when when we openly and willingly obey the Holy Spirit it comes natural to them to obey the Holy Spirit so when we realize that we are we are always willing to obey the Holy Spirit it is as if we are assimilated into the Holy Spirit God's will comes natural to us to obey it so this is how we can confirm that we are filled with the Holy Spirit those who are filled with the Holy Spirit even though even though they suffer difficult circumstances and challenges they will not sell their lives so easily to the devil and then they can succeed in their lives of faith to God I wish that all the saints of the church will succeed in their lives of faith and they, they will achieve great victory in, the, in this new environment that they live in. I would wish that none of us would fail in our lives of faith in the church, though we are extremely limited right now. And I and I would pray that we will all be delivered with great victory from the devil's hands. And I bless you in the name of Jesus that you will be victorious victorious from all the devil's temptation and will be victorious in your lives of faith. So this determination that we make is not from ourselves, but it is through the Lord. It, is, it comes from the Lord's teachings. 
시험에 시험을 받으시는 그런 내용이 나옵니다. So, 그런데 굉장히 짧아요. I want to describe about the book of Mark. 글이 특징입니다. And so, the, na- the characteristic of the book of Mark is that it is very concise, it is short. But why was the book of Mark written in such a concise way? It seeks to show that Jesus came as the king. Jesus came as the king. It wants to concisely describe this without any other unnecessary detail. It wants... It has no need for any extra detail, which is unnecessary, but only wants to straightforwardly describe that Jesus came as the king. And this is why Mark was written in such a concise way. And so it was to confirm that Jesus truly came and fulfilled everything as he did. And so... If something, uh, if something, it is not something which, which occurred and then we have plenty of time to confirm it afterwards. But Jesus was, Jesus was announced as the king and he came to this earth and he fulfilled everything step by step by the guidance of the Holy Spirit without interruption. And this is this is this is how the book of Mark describes Jesus. He came as the one with the duty of Christ to fulfill it according to God's plan. So the Father had already planned had already planned his plan and Jesus had come and had fleshed it out. So all those unnecessary details were taken out of the book of Mark about Jesus saying this or Jesus saying that or other people remarking about this and that. They were all left out. And such is the same case with this Bible passage found in Mark chapter 1 verse 12 to 13. It only it does not have any unnecessary details, but thoroughly mentions, thoroughly describes that Jesus came as the king. It directly describes that Jesus came as the king and that he came as Messiah. This has been this has been uh satisf- this has been described in a very satisfying way. So Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River and we know that there was great glory there. We know that heaven opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus and it is as if the Holy it is as if it was shown that the Holy Spirit protects and preserves Jesus and the whole world was witness to this. And then immediately the Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the desert. So this was an immediate change of circumstances. So Jesus was enjoying all the glory of God. And he heard the voice of the Father. And without and without any without any pause, he was immediately driven by the Holy Spirit into the desert. And it was even before Jesus started his busy public ministry, but he was driven into a desolate waste, a desolate desert, and he was driven there in this harsh and lonely desert which was which was in a very difficult conditions so it says in this main bible passage mark chapter 1 verse 12 the immediately the spirit drove him into the wilderness 
It says that the Holy Spirit drove him immediately into the wilderness. And yet, uh, Matthew and Luke describe the same scene in a different way. They use different terms. For in Mark, it says that the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. But in Matthew and in Luke, it says that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the desert. So, a different term is used in Matthew and Luke. But of all the expressions, Mark uses the most Mark uses the strongest expression. He was driven into the desert. And why did why did why did why was it described in this way? So Jesus it was no it was not luck that Jesus was driven into the desert to be tempted by the devil. It was not it was not by chance or by luck, but it was the first it was as ordered by God the Father in accordance with his plan and Jesus obeyed the will of God the Father and even when Jesus was driven into the desert by the Holy Spirit he did not hesitate for a moment but completely obeyed God the Father and this is why he was driven into the desert and he purely obeyed Jesus purely obeyed the will of God the Father as the Christ and he was driven into the desert this was this was the path that he needed to cross he had purely he had purely accepted and obeyed the will of the Father so it says that he was driven into the desert so the expression states that he was driven into the desert as if by force he was driven like force into the desert by the Holy Spirit and it never mentions that Jesus resisted the Holy Spirit and not only this but it shows that the Holy Spirit was the main agent guiding Jesus as he was driven into the desert Rather, it was the Holy Spirit who completely guided, who completely guided Jesus as he was driven into the desert. And so that Jesus could completely obey the will of the Father, the Holy Spirit strongly moved Jesus into the desert, into the desert. So Jesus did not go into the desert by his own by his own idea but the moment that he was baptized the, the the scene of the temptation immediately occurred and and this is mentioned in all the in all the synoptic gospels matthew mark and luke it it mentions this scene with a conjunction a conjunction term immediately or and or and then so this is not mentioned in the Korean but in English it either mentions the word and or and then or and immediately Jesus was driven into the desert so this this shows that this was the direct next step when Jesus was led into the desert it shows that it is related when Jesus when Jesus was baptized with glory in the in the Jordan River he was then immediately driven into the desert by the Holy Spirit and this was so this was so Jesus would fulfill the will of the Father there was a plan the Father's plan was found here so the moment he received glory when he was baptized in the Jordan River, he was immediately driven into the desert. Since his status as God's son was confirmed, he was he was immediately sent into temptation. He was immediately tempted in the desert as he was driven by the Holy Spirit. 
So why did Jesus enter the desert? It was so he would be tempted by the devil. It says in, it says in Matthew chapter four verse one, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. This was within the Father's plan. It was, it was planned by the Father. So, the Son of God, the moment, the moment that Jesus was recognized by his status as the Son of God, he was immediately sent into the desert to be tempted by the enemy. And he needed to struggle against the devil face to face. This was, this was the requirement of God's Son. And what was the purpose of the devil? And what was this? What was the purpose of the devil's temptation? So we can we can interpret it various ways, but the most appropriate way to interpret the devil's temptation was that if so that the devil the devil tempted Jesus so that Jesus would depart from God's will. So the devil tempted Jesus so that he would abandon God's will. And if the devil successfully tempted Jesus, Jesus would be tempted and flee from God's will. So it was it was dangerous that the Son of God was tempted by the devil. He was he is one person of the Trinity, and it was a difficult and challenging situation to be tempted by the devil. A few moments before he received glory in baptism in the baptism in the Jordan River, and immediately he was driven into the desert to be to be tempted to be tempted by the devil he who came as he who he who was the son of god and had come to us was immediately exposed to the enemy's attacks to be tempted by him and this idea itself was dangerous if Jesus did not overcome the devil's temptation, then there would have been great crisis. If Jesus did not overcome the devil's temptation, then it will be shown that the Son of God could not overcome the devil and everyone would know and it would be revealed that the Son could not fulfill the Father's will. And even more, and even more disastrous than disastrous than this is that is that is that if Jesus gave in to the devil's temptation, it would appear as if Jesus it would be that Jesus sinned against God, and then that would be the end and he would fail. If he failed the devil's temptation, if he failed the devil's temptation, it would seem, it would, it would be revealed that the Son of God had failed. And even though, even though the Son of God may may not have wished to obey the Father's will, he needed to overcome and obey. And it says in, and it says, and it was prophesied in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, concerning the Son of God obeying, obeying God's will since the beginning because the Son of God had come to destroy the devil's works. And it is found in John chapter, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, the reason the Son of God came was to destroy the devil's work. And yet if 
the Son of God failed at this moment of temptation, everything would have failed. And, and of, all, of all the creatures in this physical universe, of all the creatures of this physical universe, the most powerful and most evil and most wicked one is... So although he may appear to be just and to be just and pleasing on the outside, and he may be alluring with his speech, he may be able to speak well, he may be quite 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 colorful and attractive on the outside, and he speaks well so that he can deceive those who hear and so they will be led to their destruction. So this is, this is the devil. And the devil and uh, Jesus came, went into the desert to be driven, to be tempted by the devil. It was a, the desert was a desolate place. And this refers to the desert of Judea. It was, it was a place where no one could live. No matter how hard you tried, no one could survive in the desert. It was difficult to go through, difficult to explore. It was dangerous and not pleasant at all. Rather than make you joyful, it it made it makes you it makes you in danger. It is the conditions are harsh. It takes away your joy and hope. There are dry rocks all over the place. It immediately sends you into danger. There are harsh mountains and valleys. And even by... So, de so a desert is commonly understood to be a place where creatures, where evil creatures and beasts, cre uh, beasts go here and there. And the Son of God was driven into the desert. The devil, uh, the desert, the desert is a place, the desert is a place where evil creatures and evil beasts randomly and constantly move across the surface. And this was the ideal place for the devil to work and to tempt the Son of God. Who is the devil? The devil is the opposer. He opposes and resists God. He tries to make God's plan fail. He, he tries to prevent God's plan from taking place and he leads human beings to their destruction. So Jesus, Jesus dwelled in the desert for over 40 days. He fasted for 40 days and this, this was, it was a very difficult challenge. And nevertheless, the Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And the and the devil tried to try to use all his evil works against Jesus, and and so it was arranged that Jesus it was arranged that Jesus would be exposed and vulnerable to the devil's attacks. So in the so in so in the past mankind was tempted uh, Adam was tempted by tempted by the devil and he was in he was in a place of good conditions and yet the second Adam, the Son of Man, had come and he was led into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And you know that the conditions, that if you fast in the desert, in the hot desert, the conditions are terrible and desperate for you to survive. 
for you are constantly thirsty, the heat is very scorching. If you were, if you lived in the city, you could easily lie down in peace. And yet the conditions were terrible in the desert. He was he tempted for over 40 days. It was difficult to, su to survive in the harsh desert. The desert was a place where vipers and spiders and scorpions would, would crawl about. And even the Bible says that he was with the he was with the animals and beasts. So that this means that Jesus dwelled in a dangerous place. It was in a place where things it was in a place with no advantage and not helpful at all. So Jesus Jesus did not eat and drink for over 40 days. And if a person goes through this experience, uh, it does, it does, it takes out all the strength in both body and mind. You cannot think properly or control yourself pro properly. Not only does it weaken you, in the physical body, but it weakens your psychology. So, whoever it is, if they if they merely fast for just three or four days, their condition immediately worsens. And yet, consider that Jesus fasted in the desert for over 40 days. Not eating and drinking itself is very is very dangerous but if he had done this for over 40 days in the desert his situation would be would have been critical and this was the situation where Jesus needed to be tempted by the devil he had to face this harsh condition and after the 40 days, and after the 40 days, so while he was being tempted by the desert in the 40 days, he did not simply give up and then go back into the city, but he endured until the end. The devil constantly tempted Jesus and tried to find weakness. It was not that Jesus refused to hear the devil's tempting. The situation is not that simple. So he who he who was the king needed to face the temptation of the devil. So, it was, it was something that the Son of God needed to face. And there was no effective other way, there was no other effective way or technique to... So we know that despite the Son of God experiencing these harsh circumstances, and he was physically and mentally weakened since he fasted for 40 days. And yet the Son of God used the best technique, the best method to overcome the devil's temptation. And what was this? Not only, not only did he just survive, but even though the desert, even though he was in a critical situation, being tempted in the hands of the devil, and yet, and although Jesus was, Jesus was man, and Jesus was man, and he was constantly tempted by the devil, and although the devil tried to find any any weakness in his flesh by any means possible and the devil tried to find any weakness possible and any 
kind of cause for temptation or weakness or sin, the devil used any means possible. And this, and the main purpose was so that this was that Jesus would give up on the will of God and abandon his will. So not only would Jesus have failed and died in his flesh, but the, but the devil tried to make Jesus, the devil tried to make Jesus give up on the will of God. Not only was the conditions terrible physically, but the devil himself tried to tempt the Son of God. So Satan, so the question was, was Jesus able to overcome the devil's temptation? So the devil tried to use any means possible to tempt Jesus. Are you going to give in to this or are you going to give in to that? So was the, the question was, was, will Jesus give up on God's will and give in to the devil's enticement? But dear Sangwa people, Jesus completely overcame the devil's temptation and drove him away. He completely overcame and conquered the devil's temptation. He has now been driven out and fled. And the conclusion, the conclusion was, the angels came and attended him. It says in Mark chapter 1, 13, the angels came to attend Jesus. So Jesus overcame, Jesus overcame these harsh circumstances and okay, overcame with victory. Although the devil used every plan and strength possible to overcome Jesus. So it says in the book of Luke, so the devil used every means possible to tempt Jesus and then he fled. And then it mentions that the angels came and attended to Jesus. It mentions that the angels came and ministered to Jesus. So he had come as the king. He entered as the king. And this was proved. It was proved as to who he was as the victorious king who would save who would surely save the world with power. He is the one with sufficient faith to save all the world. And he was driven into the desert by the Holy Spirit. And after this, after this, he never, he was never hindered, but continued until the end. So the devil tried to use any means to tempt Jesus in the same way, in the same way Jesus continued to be victorious over the devil's temptation. So this is a victorious struggle. It is a victorious struggle by which Jesus overcame the devil's temptation. So, so that we could participate in this public ministry of Jesus, Jesus had prepared this and had overcome. And what is important to us is that is that in these difficult circumstances even though we do not have any strength to continue God's will even though it is difficult to survive in these difficult circumstances the deeds of the the deeds of Jesus becomes our model it becomes the model that we should follow so we must also do this we can do this because the model has been shown to us as Jesus had done so you and I should follow this model 
And we should put this into practice in our body and Jesus taught us how to do this. Not only is this so, but we must know that Jesus can help those who are in temptation as he overcame temptation. And this is found in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. And this has been given to us. So God has promised that Jesus will help those who are being tempted since he himself suffered when he was tempted. So although he had struggled against the enemy and he knows how difficult it is, he will help those who are being tempted. And this is what God has said to us. He does not, he cannot sympathize and he is not ignorant of our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So this is why he can easily help and aid us. As found in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. So the struggle that Jesus faced is also something we must face. Yet the people of the world do not know about this, but they just experience their suffering. Because they cannot see the real environment behind this. But we Christians know about this. And it is not just temptations that follow us. For we know that the enemy tries to tempt us. And in the same way as we have faced this corona pandemic and as we have faced difficult situations in the church and economic problems, family problems, social problems, all sorts of problems. And because of these challenges, everything becomes dark. And this is what temptation is like. And and we and and we might be tempted to give up on our lives of faith. We must know that the enemy does not rest, but he tries, he tries, he tries to use all ma all means possible to make us perish. And this is the nature of our life of faith. For we know that humans have the nature to become corrupt and to do evil. And because of this weakness in this flesh, we have this innate weakness to follow our own corruption. And we are always, because of this, exposed to the devil's work. We always have the chance to be vulnerable to the devil's attack. This cannot be escaped, yet we must face this. For we know that the devil or Satan tries to harm us. Although we are God's children, the devil does not leave us as we are. For he tries to convince us, it is okay to live as you wish, what's the harm? And so the devil never gives up in, try, in trying to guide us, try to lead us astray. He tries to lead us in all this suffering. Yet even though this is so, even though this is so, he has given his life over to us. And the way, the way that we can overcome in our lives of faith and to be blessed and to have eternal joy and victory is that we do not give up. So by the fullness of the Holy Spirit, let us overcome by the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Let us always be filled with the Holy Spirit as we obey Jesus Christ and have the determination to do so. And as we abandon the desires of the flesh, we can do this. So we must have the determination to obey the Holy Spirit. 
And we must train to obey the Holy Spirit. We must, we must do the act of obeying, not merely with our thoughts. Until we do this, we are not obeying, and we must train to obey. So godliness is done by training. So the Holy Spirit tries to guide us. Not only is this so, but we must train to trust in the Holy Spirit. Obedience is absolute until we must train to the point that we always obey and that we will always be submission. We always be in submission to God. We must train by the Holy Spirit until until we arrive and we must continue until we accept all the thoughts of God exactly as he commands so that we can receive an even more greater glory and we must overcome our temptations so we know that in so we must know that in this way we can fulfill God's plan in our public lives and with obedience and perseverance we can fulfill this and what we must not forget is that the son is that the devil uses the word of god to confuse us and to deceive us and the devil uses uses the word of God in a deceptive way and he chooses just bits of the word of God and rejects others to allure us and confuse and deceive us. He uses the word of God and he uses, he deceives us to, th to, to lead us to justify our sin. But those, those saints who have the Holy Spirit are not so easily, do not so easily stumble. And yet the enemy does not give up so easily for he tries to entice those in the weakness of our flesh so that he can separate us from God. So we must keep the desires of our flesh in control. And we know, we know that the devil tries to bring us to destruction until the very end through the weakness of our flesh. But dear Sangwa people, we know that the Lord is with us. So we must surely overcome our temptations. Temptation comes upon all people. And such a situation as today is ideal for temptation. Yet we know that Jesus experienced all this and, and enabled us to be victorious. So no matter how difficult the situation is, and, no ma and even though things are very difficult, I exhort you in the name of Jesus to overcome. So no matter how difficult the situation is, and how challenging and forbidding things are. We should trust in Jesus, be guided by the Holy Spirit, and should overcome with great victory. So this, so we should all individually overcome. But we must also think, in terms of our public lives, we must think as one church. So all our lives, our public lives and we must struggle together so that we will all overcome we should not be selfish like worldly people we should not be selfish like worldly people and only care about ourselves but as Christians we must share the love of God and strengthen the church and we must have joy and encouragement so that we can encourage and strengthen each other in the church. And we must surely overcome 
We do not need to. We don't need to run and be, run and do this and that all over the place. For rather, for if certain individuals run off on their own, the rest lag behind. So we must run together and have a joint victory. And by our victory, not just as individuals. If we overcome in this way, then we, then God will confirm our victory together. So, beloved Sangwak people, so let us be victorious in our lives of faith together in this church, train together, obey together, be filled with the Holy Spirit together and continue to build up our faith together in the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus. So let us gain the joy of the Holy Spirit upon all of us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And let us pray. Let us pray that God will help us. Let us pray that we will always be guided by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray that since God plans our steps and He provides His plan for our lives, let us achieve victory and let us confess that we want to fulfill the plan of God, that we want to follow His plan and live by His power and live by His grace and to achieve this great victory in Him. Now let us all pray together. Let us pray that God will give us victory to our faith. Our 정말 우리 하나님께서 교회를 이끄시고 교회를 사랑하시고 교회를 승리케 하시고 교회를 사랑하시고 교회를 움직이시는 가운데 정말 자기들의 본문을 다 하게 하시고 정말 우리 모두를 승리로 이끄시는 교회의 부르심에 모두 합당한 자들이 다 되도록 도와주시옵소서 시험에 모두 견고하게 서서 이기는 자들 다 되도록 도와주시고 우리 교회가 아무리 어렵고 개인적으로 전체적으로 많은 정말 환경에 그런 어려움이 있을지라도 고난이 있을지라도 다 이겨가도록 하나님 도와주시고 인도하여 주시고 정말 영적으로 많은 승리하는 자들이 다 되어서 하나님의 일 많은 하나님의 준비하신 일 많은 성공해가는 정말 복된 성도들 이 땅에 있을 때 주님과 함께 하나님의 뜻을 영원한 하나님의 계획을 실천하는 자들 되게 도와주옵소서 주여 도와주십시오 하나님 아버지 Holy God our Father we pray that you would help all those who has received your word. We pray that they may have this word to be deeply embedded in them. And we pray that great victory may come upon them. We pray that although we are all facing harsh circumstances, but just as the Son of God went through all these and overcame, we pray that we may follow his model exactly as he had done. We pray that you'd help us in this endeavor. And no matter what difficultation we face, we pray that we may continue to fulfill your eternal plan and purpose. We pray that we may all develop wonderfully in our lives of faith. We pray that none of us will betray you or depart from your plan. We pray that we may all fulfill the eternal will of God. We pray that you would help us in this. And though, and we pray that although we are in these difficult circumstances, we pray that we may all pass through this. We pray that we may receive and enjoy the happiness of God. We pray that you would teach us the way to go and not only this but we pray that you'd give us power in our everyday 
lives and will give us sufficient power to overcome. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So, the words that God speaks to us, these themselves are promises. We are filled on the inside with the promises of God. Let us all continue to go straight towards God and all the victory and faith of God. Now let us confess this, standing on the promises. Hallelujah.
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon all those who worship to all the beloved Sangwak people upon their spirits and their families forever. Amen.